I'm on here, we're looking at Psalm 57, verse 1, where David says, Have mercy on me, my God, have mercy on me, for in you I take refuge. I will take refuge in the shadow of your wings until the disaster has passed. So at the top of Psalm 57, we can read an inscription which includes when he had fled from Saul into the cave. So I'm thinking this is 1 Psalm 24, where David is in a cave and uh, he is dealing with the fact that Saul is looking for him. It says in 1 Samuel 24 verse 1, or beginning of verse 1, after Saul returned from pursuing the Philistines, he was told David is in the desert of En Gedi. So Saul took 3,000 chosen men from all Israel and set out to look for David and his men near the crags of the wild goats. He came to the sheep pens along the way. The cave was there and Saul went in to relieve himself. David and his men were far back in the cave. So that is the setting of this psalm according to the inscription at the head of the psalm it's an encounter that david has with saul where he could kill him in fact he gets so close to him he cuts off the edge of his robe and then he feels bad about having done that because the lord's anointed shouldn't be treated that way is his is his argument so saul is in danger of being killed in fact david's men say kill him look god's delivered him into your hands you've got the chance to kill him and david draws a line at that he says no i'm not going to kill him so he thinks that cutting off his robe with the edge of his robe is okay but then he thinks no i shouldn't have done that either and he draws another line i really shouldn't have uh, treated saul this way so in verse one when we're thinking about this it appears that david is talking about a disaster that needs to pass and it feels to me that it's not just the fact that Saul might find him and his men and kill him that David is worried about actually the biggest disaster would be that in this face-off that David does something that he shouldn't do what he should do is cry out to God what he should do is trust God the biggest disaster would be if he were to do something that he shouldn't have done and really this is the center of the idea of meekness in the Bible meekness doesn't sound great but what we have in meekness is a powerful person choosing not to use their power and David was powerful he was a general and he was a, a swordsman and he could easily have killed Saul and he chooses not to. He easily could slice a bit off Saul's robe, creep up on him, be absolutely silent, slice a bit of his robe off whilst he was distracted. He easily could have done it and he does do that and he thinks he shouldn't have done that. He wasn't meek enough. The big disaster in this cave would be if he doesn't restrain himself because rather than being a man of action david knows he needs to be a man of prayer and he is saying to god have mercy on me about something well what mercy does david need well he needs to be rescued from saul but he also needs to be rescued from himself he must be rescued from his own tendency to do what he wants to do and not trust in god and so he says have mercy on me god i I'm going to take refuge in you. I'm going to take refuge in the shadow of your wings until the disaster has passed. He's going to seek God's protection, not his own protection, not the protection of a man who is able to do anything that he wants and therefore sometimes just does whatever seems easiest. He is going to take refuge in the shadow of God's wings. It's a protecting image that God is going to protect David if David takes refuge. So I'm going to read this uh, verse again. It's Psalm 57 verse 1. Have mercy on me, my God. Have mercy on me, for in you I take refuge. I will take refuge in the shadow of your wings until the disaster has passed. Lord Jesus, help us to trust in you and to uh, take refuge in you rather than taking refuge in our own ideas and our own sense of action. In Jesus' name, amen.
I've already here, we're looking at Psalm 57 verse 2, where David says, I cry out to God most high, to God who vindicates me. So we're reading Psalm 57, and we know that Psalm 57 is set in 1 Samuel 24, where David has approached Saul in the cave and has cut off the edge of his robe and then has felt guilty for having done that. He has a conversation with Saul that uh, says, look, I could have killed you and I didn't, even though my men wanted me to kill you, I didn't kill you. So that proves that when your men say, David's just out to kill you, they're wrong. And they have a conversation and Saul feels bad and goes away. And in this verse, David underlines what he's just said. So he has been sorry for taking action in this way he's not pleased with himself he wasn't meek as i said in the last episode he instead took things into his own hands he could have killed him but he didn't but instead he just cuts off the edge of his robe which also is too much and rather than his own action david wants to take refuge in the shadow of god's wings until the disaster is passed and the disaster is that he might do something that he shouldn't have done and rather than uh, trusting himself he wants to trust in god most high and he cries out to god most high to God who vindicates me. Now, vindication is a word that uh, has a special meaning. Rather than God forgiving him, which would mean that he'd done something wrong, God vindicates him, which means that he makes it clear that David has done nothing wrong. And David has not tried to kill Saul. David has resisted killing Saul. David has re resisted rebelling against uh, Saul. He has tried to be a good subject and has tried to rely on God. And if God wants David to have the kingdom, God is going to create that situation. And David doesn't have to run after it. And because of that, David has tried to behave well towards Saul, even though Saul has behaved terribly towards David. And David is crushed by this. He has been a general in Saul's army. He has married Saul's daughter. His best friend is Saul's son. And he is very much part of the ruling family of Israel and the ruling elite. And suddenly Saul turns against him for no reason. And David wants vindication. He wants God to declare that David has done no wrong. In fact, he knows that God vindicates him. That's God's attitude towards him. And he wants Saul to see it. And that may be something that is on our heart, that we are accused falsely of behaving in a particular way. And we uh, pray, God, let it be clear that I am innocent. And it, in many situations, it can be clear that we believe that other people believe things about us that are false. It's hard for us to demonstrate that other people think things about us. And so we find it very pressurizing and difficult and a hard situation. Well, we can pray that God would vindicate us. God would show to other people what the truth is. And it's a prayer that David takes up at this point and we can take up too the passion that we read in verse 2 which is David isn't just speaking to the most high God he's crying out he is passionate about his relationship with God and the God who vindicates him and we're going to find out in the next verse a little bit more what that looks like but in this verse we are just left with the picture of David crying out, relying on God, believing that God is going to look after him. So I'm going to read this verse again, Psalm 57, verse 2. I cry out to God most high, to God who vindicates me. Lord Jesus, uh, we cry out to you and we ask that you would help us uh, in any situation where we feel that others think we've done wrong and we haven't. In Jesus' name, amen.
Hi Barney here, we're looking at Psalm 57 verse 3 where David says, He sends from heaven and saves me, rebuking those who hotly pursue me. God sends forth his love and his faithfulness. So David is crying out to God for vindication. He wants God to make it clear that he hasn't sinned. He wants God to make it clear to Saul and the rest of the kingdom that he has put God first and been faithful to what's right and he hasn't pursued his own benefit he's done nothing but tried to do what's right and bless Saul and he's crying out to God he's saying please make it clear and verse 3 has David saying he sends from heaven and saves me what does he send well in the in the later part of the verse we find David saying that God sends forth his love and his faithfulness so God's love and his faithfulness is sent from heaven and the result is that David is saved that's what David knows to be God's plan for him. And on the way, God rebukes those who hotly pursue David. And there's 3,000 men outside the cave, and uh, they're with uh, Saul, and they are hotly pursuing David and David's men, and they need rebuking. David knows that a situation needs to arise where those men go away, because whilst David has 400 men and he's in a cave, there's 3,000 outside the cave, and he needs some sort of way out of this situation. And we can read in 1 Samuel 24 that David does get out of the situation, that Saul wanders into the cave. Now, Saul doesn't know that David's in the cave. Saul is looking for David, and so he's in the area that he's heard that David is in, but he doesn't know that David is in the cave. He wouldn't go in there to relieve himself if he'd known that David was there. So God has done something uh, for David. God has made Saul vulnerable to David. Now, his men think this proves that God wants you to kill Saul. And they say that to David. But David knows he can't do that. He can't touch the Lord's anointed he creates a situation where God sends forth his love and his faithfulness and those who hotly pursue David are rebuked and David is saved. And this is the whole situation that we're talking about. And it is a miraculous one. And it is one which leads to a conversation which means that instead of 3,000 men fighting 400 men and uh, David uh, dying, we have a situation where David walks away free so if we're in a situation of difficulty if we're in a situation where we feel trapped where others are accusing us rather than defending ourselves we have the option of relying on God we have the option of asking God to send from heaven and save us of asking God to send forth his love and his faithfulness of asking God to do the rebuking rather than doing the rebuking and saving ourselves and this is really important if we're to understand the virtue of meekness, because meekness is a powerful person choosing not to use that power because they want to do what's right and they want God to step in. And that is how we should pray in difficult situations. It's hard to do it. It's hard to uh, get hold of our natural inclinations. It's hard to demonstrate self-restraint. But when we are being provoked, if we act under provocation, we rarely act well and we rarely do the best thing, even for ourselves. We often get goaded into foolishness. It is much wiser not to act under pressure, but to be meek, to restrain ourselves and to wait and to find that God has done something for us. So I'm going to read this again. This is Psalm 57, verse 3. He sends from heaven and saves me, rebuking those who hotly pursue me. God sends forth his love and his faithfulness. Lord Jesus, I pray that you would help us to restrain ourselves so you can act on our behalf. In Jesus' name, amen. here we're looking at psalm 57 verse 4 where david says i am in the midst of lions i am forced to dwell among ravenous beasts men whose teeth are spears and arrows whose tongues are sharp swords so david says that he is in the middle of men 
whose teeth are spears, whose tongues are sharp swords, men who are like ravenous beasts, like lions. And in 1 Samuel 24, David is between a group of 400 men who are meant to be his men who say, it's time to kill Saul, and 3,000 men who are outside the cave who want to kill David, and he has to keep his presence of mind. He has to do the right thing. And the story in 1 Samuel 24, where this psalm is based, shows us that David was goaded into doing something that he later regretted. He was goaded into cutting off the a corner of the robe of Saul as Saul was relieving himself. And then later he says, I shouldn't have done that. And he realises that he's in the middle of the most incredible sort of pressure. And because of that, he's in the middle of much pressure. And because of that, he nearly does something that's wrong. I am in the midst of lions, is what he says, that both inside the cave and outside the cave, there are ravenous beasts, all who just want him to kill or be killed. There's no sense, no moral sense in the context that he's in, apart from his own sense that he must cry out to God and get God to vindicate him, rather than be caught in this mess of ravenous beasts, people who want to kill or be killed and who don't seem to care what is true. These men have teeth that are spears and arrows, and their tongues are sharp swords. And this is a metaphor all about lions and people, that the people are like lions because they uh, want to kill, and, he, and the lions are like people. He imagines them as uh, creatures with teeth, and spear, teeth that are spears and arrows and tongues that are swords. It's an idea that something beastly has taken over the minds of the people around him. And he doesn't want to be involved with that. He wants to put God first. And how he wants to do it is he wants to turn in the difficult situation he's in, he wants to turn to God. And in the next verse, we'll find that that's exactly what he does. He turns to God and he prays and he is willing uh, to worship even. In verse eight, we find that uh, he it talks about worship. But in the middle of the most difficult situation, David has to think very carefully, and then he has to turn to God. And we may be in that situation. We may be in a situation of great difficulty, and we need to pause, and we need to think. We need to not react. We need to observe what's going on around us, realise that Nothing good can come of getting involved with the conflict that we are in and remove ourselves from it by asking God to step in. So I'm going to read this again. This is Psalm 57 verse 4. I am in the midst of lions. I am forced to dwell among ravenous beasts, men whose teeth are spears and arrows, whose tongues are sharp swords. Lord Jesus, help us to really understand the context that we're in when we're in conflict and be uh, ready to trust you rather than ourselves, rather than the people around us. Lord Jesus, we want to cry out to you. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm on here, we're looking at Psalm 57, verse 5, where David says, Be exalted, O God, above the heavens, let your glory be over all the earth. So in verse 4, we've been hearing about how David is bewailing the fact that he is forced to live among ravenous beasts. And in the story in 1 Samuel 24, we know that David is in a cave and his 400 men are telling him to kill Saul, who has wandered into the cave to relieve himself and there's 3,000 men outside who want to kill David and the one thing David doesn't want to do is kill Saul but the one thing he is most tempted to do is kill Saul and sort it out but he believes that he should not raise his hand against the Lord's anointed. He cuts off the corner of his robe and he even feels bad about that but he shows Saul the corner of his robe and says I could have killed you if I'd wanted to. Your men say that I'm trying to kill you, but I'm not. So he's in a really difficult place. 
He's sorely tempted uh, to do something that would solve his problems. Everyone around him wants him to do it, and he refuses. And earlier in verse 2, he says, I cry out to God, most high, to God who vindicates me. And in verse 1, he says, Have mercy on me, my God, have mercy on me, for in you I take refuge. I take refuge in the shadow of your wings until the disaster has passed. And so this verse 5 is a prayer to God. It, in some ways, you might think it's a bit out of context because verse 4 is complaining about the ravenous beasts, the people he has to live with. And verse 6 is also complaining about what uh, his enemies are doing. But in verse 5, he says, Be exalted, O God, above the earth. Let your glory be over all the earth. Because he is doing what he says he is going to do in verse 2. He says he's going to cry out to God most high, to God who vindicates me. He's going to take refuge in the shadow of God's wings. He's going to rely on spiritual reality more than he does on physical reality. Even though he is in danger, he's surrounded by people whose teeth are spears and arrows, whose tongues are sharp swords, who spread a net for his feet. When he's in distress, they dig a pit and uh, they try and catch him. And what we have here is David doing what he says he's going to do, which is to cry out to God, which is to pray, which is to glorify God. And in this verse, he doesn't even ask God to save him. He just says, be exalted, O God, be lifted up, be known amongst the nations as the God of all the universe. And let your glory be over all the earth. Let it be clear that you really are God. Let your heaviness, let everything that's good about you be completely available and viewable and accessible by the nations and all the peoples of the earth. That's what his prayer is. His prayer is that the kingdom of God comes. His prayer is that God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's what David wants at this point. And he insists on using prayer and praise as his number one weapon. He could use other weapons. He could use weapons of this earth. And it says in the New Testament that uh, our battle is not against flesh and blood, but it is against principalities and powers in the heavenly places. And David takes a similar standpoint. He says that his most important weapon at this point is crying out to God and uh, it's prayer. And when we are in a difficult situation like this, when we are hemmed in from every side where we are being forced to do the things that we do not want to do, there is always a way out and the way out is to cry out to God. And this is what we learn in 1 Samuel 24. So I'm going to read Psalm 57, verse 5 again. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. Jesus, help us turn to you. Help us turn uh, to prayer. Help us ask for your kingdom to come uh, when we are under pressure. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm only here, we're looking at Psalm 57, verse 6, where David says, They spread a net for my feet. I was bowed down in distress. They dug a pit in my path, but they have fallen into it themselves. So David's in a cave. Behind him, he has 400 men who want him to kill Saul, and he doesn't want to kill Saul. Outside the cave, there are 3,000 men who want Saul to kill David. And David has managed to sneak up on Saul in the cave. Saul's gone in to relieve himself, not knowing there were 400 men and David in the cave. So it appears to be a provision by God so that David can kill Saul. But David knows that's not true and he tests it and he knows that it's the case that it's not right to raise your hand up against the Lord's anointed. And that seems to be not 
it doesn't matter how the Lord's anointed is behaving. It's up to the Lord to deal with the Lord's anointed. In other words, the king. It's not up to David to dispatch him, even if uh, the Lord's anointed is trying to kill him. And so what we have here is David then just deciding that he needs to pray in the previous verse. In the verse before that, we have the reference to David saying he's in the midst of lions. He's forced to dwell among ravenous beasts. In the previous verse, he prays. In this verse, he talks about the ravenous beasts again. And in the next verse, he begins to pray. In fact, 7, 8, 9, 10 and 11 are all verses of praise. It's like he's transitioning from looking at the earthly reality to only caring about the spiritual reality. He sees that he's hemmed in by the men in his, in the cave with him were meant to be his men and the men outside who all want something he doesn't want and he s- starts to pray and then in this verse he his attention is brought back to all the people that he can't deal with that he doesn't want to do what they want to do and then in the next verse we go back to prayer and praise and then for five verses altogether it's just prayer and in this verse then we look at the fact that David said they spread a net for my feet I was bowed down in distress so I I feel that in this verse we are being metaphorical that in the situation that he is in Saul's men are looking for David and they are trying to create various traps for him and trying to corner him in his difficulty he knows they're looking for him he knows they're spreading a net for his feet metaphorically and he's distressed by it but in the next two lines it says they dug a pit in my path but they have fallen into it themselves he's beginning to acknowledge that whatever his enemies do god will turn it against them And these are transition phrases because instead of just looking at the situation and being horrified by by it, being bowed down in distress, David is beginning to look at the situation and deciding that he can already see God at work in it, God at work protecting him because the problems, the weapons are being turned against those who are trying to harm him. And he's starting to get back into focusing on God. He prayed a magnificent prayer in verse five. Be exalted, O God, above the earth. Let your glory be over all the earth. He prayed a magnificent prayer in verse five. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. In this verse six, he's beginning to look at his circumstances again, but he lifts his countenance back towards God and he assures himself that even in the difficulty God is there and um, that is one way we can deal with the things that we're going through yes we should just praise God and thank him for his goodness we should ask for his kingdom to come and his glory to be all the earth but we can also look at even the details of our situation and pray for God to be involved in them ask for him to turn the problem against those who are causing the problem so that they reap what they sow because that's what happens that if someone digs a pit and they fall into it themselves they reap they have reaped what they have sown and uh, we may appropriately pray that into the situation so that people may learn from their own mistakes rather than blaming us in the situation so i'm going to read this again this is verse 6 of psalm 57 they spread a net for my feet i was bowed down in distress they dug a pit in my path but they have fallen into it themselves lord jesus i pray that you would help us to raise our eyes from our situation and uh, look at you and uh, lord when we look at our situation help us to see you in it in jesus name amen